Hi all, let's continue our look at the evolution of chess style and see how Mikhail Botvinnik played against Andrei Lilienthal, who was another winner uh, of the USSR Championship the previous year. So let's see, d4 for Mikhail Botvinnik and Lilienthal played knight f6 and we saw actually the king's engine being chosen by black. So here Botvinnik chooses actually knight f3 d6 and now the fianchetto variation so a very solid approach sometimes this takes the fun out of black's attacking chances on the king side it secures white's king a little bit more makes the game a bit more positional in some respects knight's bd7 we see bishop g2 and both sides castling now e5 white now just plays e4 keeping this central tension and here rook e8 was chosen uh, statistically in my book nowadays it seems c6 is very popular uh, black sometimes suffers with the d6 pawn i'll just show you an example continuation this is a popular trodden continuation uh, kind of i guess well worked out over the years where black might have sufficient counterplay uh, you look at the pawn structure and it, it has causes for concern but um you know, this is this has been played quite a bit this this pawn sacrifice on c4 with white having uh, some strong pressure perhaps so very very complex games this is just an example continuation with c6 it seems uh, a modern one playing it but uh here okay in this game rookie eight this has been played quite a bit before as well white usually plays h3 here botnik chooses bishop e3 and black releases that central tension knight takes d4 Knight e5 and white just secures the c4 pawn and I believe you know white has extra space in the grip in the center here it's in many ways it's an uncomfortable uh, setup for black uh, this position knight fg4 bishop f4 and now knight c6 is played challenging the knight on d4 and inviting doubled pawns but uh, no that's just supported white is trying to enjoy his grip on the center black now plays f5 maybe trying to weaken white's control of the center and extend the scope of his pieces botvinnik now plays h3 kicking the knight back and now we have e takes f5 opening up this bishop on this diagonal and potentially white's grip on d5 is going to be quite strong here bishop takes f5 queen d2 providing an option perhaps of bishop h6 h5 rook a e1 we see queen d7 that pawn which is attacked is protected black plays king h7 as well mirroring that and stopping bishop h6s but here now bishop g5 this is an interesting part of the game where it seems white's got an iron grip of the d5 square and may be prepared to play bishop takes f6 not just to increase perhaps his strength of d5 his control of d5 but also provides some extra question marks around black's king safety and squares around the king we see after knight e5 uh, black is offering uh, this pawn white uh, rejects that dynamic uh, pawn sacrifice for a start something like c6 is immediately dangerous for knight f3 no bottom it doesn't want to be involved in such uh, such moves he plays knight f4 keeping an iron grip on the d5 square so there's a typical bot it keeping a, a very strong grip on the position and black now faced with pressure on b7 this might actually be a problem uh, pretty soon but also more than that uh, knight d5 is potentially unpleasant or bishop takes f6 and knight d5 so black decides here in the light of certain threats uh, to play actually c6 which is a bit of a concession on the d6 pawn uh, and this this statistically is is a bit of trouble for black in this variation in many many games where d6 can often lead to the collapse of black's position and here in fact botvinnik uses a forcing move giving up the dark square bishop uh, to now actually fork d6 and f6 and this is getting a really quite dangerous position uh, bishop e7 the bishop's not so comfortably placed on e7 in the defensive role and then we see queen c3 so the queen is taking over this diagonal it seems it's the bishop 
will have a hard time returning to its Vincetto position. And there's extra pressure being mounted now on black. We see Queen C7. And now Knight E2, as though Knight D4 all of a sudden is actually quite powerful if white can take out F5, start to dismantle black's position in some respects. Rook A D8. But first the forcing move again, kicking black's main uh, centralized piece here. Knight the knight on e5 is kicked back. And now we see knight d4. So again, powerful centralization of the knights. Uh, giving up the dark square bishop seems to have paid great dividends in this position. It seems a very, very difficult position. Uh, if the bishop moved back, say f5 looks pretty dangerous. So black just tried to reinforce the f5 bishop. But now comes knight g5 check. And this is a very, very strong move indeed. Uh, black actually resigns. He can't go here. Knight e6 would fork king and queen. If the king goes back here, then again, knight e6 again is forking queen and rook. Uh, so it's very, very unpleasant choices. If bishop takes, then black is losing a pawn. After f takes, the knight going back, knight takes f5. This this looks really, really bad to lose this pawn. And black's king safety seems shot to pieces as well. Uh, so... If, if, for example, rook takes, then white could actually take with the queen uh, to be a pawn up here. So very, very powerfully played game here from Botvinnik, not really giving black much counterplay. Uh, from a stylistic point of view, I think the willingness to give up the dark square bishop earlier uh, was, was very interesting. It led to black's Fincetto bishop being kind of out of order on e7, just very, very defensive. And the re-centralization of knights was very impressive. It seems like a very straightforward, easy win, not giving black much counterplay. Maybe Popvinic had studied the opponent's game and, and didn't really want to give him uh, many kingside uh, attacking chances. The Fincetto King's Indian uh, variation is a very, very solid choice with very little risk it seems from the white perspective it really takes the fun out of black's play the typical kingside pawn storms so a very interesting you know early example from 1941 of the finn chateau king's engine at work here okay comments or questions on youtube thanks very much